HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we have highlights from a classic Hopkinton Ashland football game, Marty's Fine Wines hosted their second annual Oktoberfest event, and we'll tell you about a new HCAM show that explores Hopkinton history. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. In front of a packed house at the Hopkinton Library, the Hopkinton Historical Society presented book author John Hodgson to speak about his new biography about Hopkintonian Richard Potter. Richard Potter ended up becoming a world-class performer and entertainer performing magic and ventriloquism. For Richard Potter, that means the people he entertained when they were children in the teens and 20s were dying out in the 70s and 80s and 90s, and that's how long his reputation lasted. Uh, a second point of this is that he was, as I believe most of you know, he was a popular entertainer. He was a ventriloquist, the first American-born ventriloquist. He was a superb magician. He also did recitations. He did song and dance routines. He did uh, little uh, excerpts from dramas. It was quite a variety show. All right, Richard Potter was the most famous entertainer in America 200 years ago, but we've lost sight, or we never had sight until the last 20, 30 years of the importance of that fact. Second, as most of you probably know, Richard Potter was a black man. That's an amazing juxtaposition. The most famous entertainer in America 200 years ago was also a black man. You will find no acknowledgement of this in the history of the African-American experience in America, which is mind-blowing. Uh, in both of these respects, in his degree of fame and exposure as an entertainer, in his degree of accomplishment as a black man, Richard Potter was literally off the charts. He has no peer in either of these respects. There was no black man in America who was as famous as he, who was as uh, successful in a uh, business sense as he. The fifth annual bocce throwdown took place at the Hopkinton Senior Center. The annual contest allows the seniors, police, and fire to test their skills on the bocce courts. Here's a look at how this year's contest went. Wow, you got all the choke calls from, from behind us. There's some chanting That's going on. That's our play. That's it. Uh, uh, last right. Brennan's hanging go. his head. No, no pressure, new guy. Here we go. That's what they're saying. Oh, and that sails the police oh fate. Red team takes it 15 to 11. We also, by the way, someone has very generously from the police department offer to get a big trophy that we can have every year and put the name on it. Nice. So right yeah. now, this is yours. I'll let Chief, uh, <laughs> I'll let you have it. And, um, oh no, wait a minute, who won here? Yeah, fire department. Yes. <laughs> oh, here, let me tell you, we won, yeah. <laughs> nice work, gentlemen, way to go. So Congratulations. We had that one year last year. We had a little slip, but this is year three, I believe. So very well done. Here you go. Look at that. Pass that around. Where is Chief Lee? I lost track of him here for a second here. I lost track of Chief Lee for a second. Oh, man. Oh, nice. so, so, Chief, this does feel a little good? This feels real nice. I'm looking forward to writing my annual report again next year to be able to talk about bocce once again. So. Bocce yeah. Throwdown 2018 is done. Red team winning. 
blue team. Well, they're, they're still here, they're crying, but fake news, it's very possible. But well, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Thanks to the uh, Hopkins Senior Center for sponsoring this event. And uh, thank everyone for coming out. We will see you next year. A new show presented by the Hopkinton Historical Society. You'll be able to see on HCAM. It's called Hopkinton's Attic, and it explores various artifacts and items that help tell the history of our town. Here's a look. I'm Kathleen Culler. Welcome to Hopkinton's Attic. A new show on HCAM, created by Kathleen Culler, and presented by the Hopkinton Historical Society, talks about some historical artifacts found in Hopkinton. On the show, Kathleen Culler talks with the hardworking volunteers at the Historical Society to find out more about Hopkinton history. And anywhere from five to 6,000 years old. And Linda said, do you think that these are, she asked Dr. Johnson, do you think that these are from the Nipmucks, which is a, obviously a tribe that many of us are familiar with in this area. The first episode discusses the Cheney collection. Here's a look. Today we'll find out how one Hopkinton farmer dug up the dirt and led us to discover residents who were here 7,000 years ago. And we'll hear about modern day sleuths Ron Yankee and Linda Connolly and their efforts to preserve a collection of artifacts for our town's study and enjoyment. Our story begins with farmer Harry Cheney who worked his 126 acre farm in the Bear Hill area of Hopkinton over 100 years ago, along what we know today as School Street. Having moved to Hopkinton from Milford to farm, Cheney found many Native American tools, cutting edges, knife points, tips and axes as he worked his land, often finding several artifacts in the same field. Cheney's collection grew and was passed on to his son Henry, who operated an amateur museum that was noticed in its day. Very remarkable, unusual, and self-educated, self-taught family. Um, he's principally remembered now for his archaeological work and for his collecting also of, of, um, of rocks, so work with geology. But in the 20s and the 30s, he collected all types of Native American artifacts, and he had a little museum in Woodville. Henry's sons, Ora, William, and Curtis, took on the museum next, with Ora eventually presiding over the collection and often selling and trading off parts of it until he died in 1991. After Ora died, the gradual decline of the property accelerated. In 2015, the Hopkinton Historical Commission met to discuss the demolition of the original cottage, by now deemed unstable, and news articles covered the crumbling of the original farmhouse and surrounding buildings. The Cheney estate gave to the Hopkinton Historical Society what remained of Ora's collection of artifacts and volunteers stepped in to secure the collection. The effort was led by Hopkinton Historical Society member Ron Yankee, who retrieved many boxes of artifacts from the attic of the property's cottage just before its demolition. With the boxes rescued from the cottage, it was now time to figure out the significance of what was in them, and that job fell to Linda Connolly. Many of us recognize Connolly because she works at the Hopkinton Public Library. But few of us realize that Connolly is also a trained archivist, and she's the one who keeps the history straight at the Hopkinton History Center, the museum maintained by the Hopkinton Historical Society on Hayden Row Street. Connolly recognized that the Cheney collection needed to be examined by an archaeologist, a level of expertise that the Hopkinton Historical Society had never sought before. Linda found for us uh, Dr. Eric Johnson, and his um, archaeological group at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. She found him while looking for someone who might be able to help us identify what we actually had in the Cheney collection. And she determined that this was uh, Dr. Johnson and his group, it's mostly graduate students who work with him out of UMass, 
uh, were a very reputable group of uh, folks who could do exactly what we needed them to do, to go through these boxes of uh, Native American artifacts and help us figure out what we had, what their purpose was to the natives who used the materials, and date the material for us and help us organize it as well. Be sure to be on the lookout for upcoming episodes of Hopkinton's Attic and see the first full episode on our website or YouTube page right now. Still to come on HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports update and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead, stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. I'm Kathleen Culler. On Saturday, October 13th at 11 a.m., the Hopkinton History Center will have archaeologist Dr. Eric Johnson present his findings on the Cheney Collection, Native American artifacts found on School Street. The artifacts are thousands of years old, and if you found an interesting artifact in your yard, like me, bring it, and Dr. Johnson will give you his opinion about its age and origin. One small item per person, please. I'll see you there. Welcome back to HCAM News. Ashland Clockers football has moved up to the TVL Large, which means this season, for the first time in recent history, the Hillers and Clockers met during the regular season. The result? Another classic game with a crazy ending. On Friday, September 28th, the 2 and 1 Hopkinton Hillers hosted the 3 and 0 Ashland Clockers. The Clockers haven't won at Hopkinton since 2007 and were looking to change that and stay undefeated on the season. It was a defensive battle throughout much of the game, but in the second quarter, Ryan Kelleher found Brandon Kelly. Sets. He's got wide somebody open. wide open. Is that Brendan Kelly? I mean, wide open down the middle, Don. I don't know whose responsibility that was, but that was a blown coverage. Touchdown, Hillers, and the extra point made it seven to nothing. The only other score came late in the fourth quarter. The Ashland Clockers found some momentum and drove downfield. First down at the 15-yard line, thereabouts. 156 to go in the fourth. Davenport back, back. He throws deep into the end zone. Into coverage. Caught! Dom Cavanaugh finds Kevin Russell. A 15-yard touchdown. And now for the extra point to tie it. Right? You know, whoever, uh, win, whoever wins this, I mean, whoever wins this got the inside track, right? Well, you still got another team there that plays next to us. It should have something to say about it. It's you, oh, oh, no, it's fake! Oh, it's fake! And the two-point conversion is good! It's a perfectly executed fake. Nathan Sickles, the holder, finds Abib Ahmed, and it's 8-7 to seven, Ashland. Hillers still have time left. Could they take advantage of it? And he's got to just throw it underneath. Another one, another one of these, and Deloy has got it now. And the big lineman got it, but he doesn't know what to do with it, and he just kind of throws it up, and it's over. The clock is a well-earned victory, and some gutsy calls by Coach McKay. The Ashland Clockers hold on and take the game by a final of eight to seven. Ashland improved to four and zero. Oh. Hopkinton falls to two and two. What a finish to this 95-year-old TVL rivalry. Truly unbelievable. Tough loss for the Hillers, but the Clockers certainly deserve some credit for this one. But it was an amazing defensive battle by both teams. Before the football game on Friday, Hopkinton Hillers girls volleyball took on Holliston for the top spot in the TVL. The Hillers girls came out of the gate firing on all cylinders. Hopkinton took the first set 25-9. They continued the domination in the second set and took it 25 to 11 and then took set number three 25 to 14 to improve their record to eight and one. It was the Hillers seventh sweep of the season. Hopkinton has an eight and O league record and finds themselves at the top of the TVL. 
Hop continues, two wins away from clinching a playoff spot. Marty's Fine Wines of Hopkinton hosted their second annual Oktoberfest event. The event drew a big turnout and a good time was had by all. Marty's Liquors hosted their second annual Oktoberfest event. During the event, donations were accepted towards the Canty's Underdog Scholarship Fund. A big turnout was on hand to enjoy beverage samples, snappy dogs, and some terrific music. It's been a fantastic day, a fantastic event. We've had probably three, four hundred people throughout the afternoon today, and everybody's happy. We've raised a tremendous amount of money for the Canty Underdog Scholarship Fund, and we'll be giving all the money to Becky the first of the week. The conditions for the event were perfect, and Rachel was thrilled with the turnout. I think that was Brad uh, looking down on us and smiling from above. Thank you very much, and, and we're looking forward to doing it again next year. Yeah, so we got a little bit of everything. We got the pressed spike seltzers, the Julie and Louise Rose, and the butternut Chardonnay from Napa Valley, California, and then Matt has a bunch of different beers. Yeah, yeah, we've got some great beers here. We've got Zero Gravity's Green State Lager, Rock Arts Limited Access Double IPA, Toppling Goliath Pseudo Sioux Pale Ale, Down the Road Hooligan Nut Brown Ale, and then Evil Genius. Their purple monkey dishwasher, which is a chocolate peanut butter porter. Terrific. Yep. Uh, what do we got over here? So I'm with Jack Savvy. I have our house lager, which is our German style golden lager. Uh, I have our o Copper Legend Oktoberfest. And I have our black lager. It's a smoked black lager called Smoke and Dagger. What's going on? We got a uh, bunch of, a couple of Oktoberfests, a couple of pumpkin beers from Craft Brewers Guild, distributor out in Everett. I mean, it's Oktoberfest, so. You gotta love it, right? I'm Chris from Night Shift Distributing. We have a wide array of beers today. Uh, we distribute beers from other breweries around the country. Today we have some Devil's Purse. We have some of our own beers from Night Shift. Mass Landing from Westbrook, Maine. Great North from Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, we have uh, extra special bitter. We have some IPAs. We have some pale ales. A wonderful vanilla porter. A uh, nice Marzen amber lager, and we have our Weiss, which is a blueberry sour. Down in the waves, she screams again. Oh, at the dark, I can't take much more.
lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Monday, October 8th at 7 p.m., Cheryl Peralt leads a creative writing workshop for students on a brand new HCAM Ed special. On Wednesday, October 10th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls volleyball team takes on the Medfield Warriors live on HCAM Ed. And at 7 p.m., Kathleen Culler takes a look into some of the collections housed in the Hopkinton History Center on Hopkinton's Attic. On Thursday, October 11th at 7 p.m., the Historic Commission hosts a public forum about the possible expansion of the Hopkinton Historic District, live on HCAM TV. And on Friday, October 12th at 7 p.m., the Hillers varsity football team takes on the Medfield Warriors, airing live on YouTube. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers girls soccer versus Ashland game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the new Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. This past Saturday featured a fun-filled day of activities in Hopkinton. To start off the day, the 44th Annual Poly Arts Festival took place at the Hopkinton Town Common, and they also held the official closing of Center School. Former students of Center School had the opportunity to have one last look before the official closing. But it's, to me, it's, it's old memories, it's good memories. It was a pitch perfect day on the Hopkinton Town Common for the 44th Annual Poly Arts Festival. HCAM News caught up with some of the vendors. Today, this is the Marathon Quilters Guild booth. Um, I'm here to promote our show that we have going on this weekend at the Center for the Arts in Hopkinton. And it's today and tomorrow, 10 to 5 and also to promote our guild. So if you're looking to join a guild, we have the information here. And you can go out to our website at marathonquilters.com and find out about us. During Hopkinton Family Fun Day at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, the Marathon Quilters Guild hosts today's show featuring some lovely work to raise money for charitable causes. This weekend we are having um, the Common Threads Quilt Show that's being hosted by Marathon Quilters Guild. There are about 113 items here and our theme is Common Threads. It's essentially finding all of the um, commonalities among people. We thought that it is a good time to, instead of focusing on how we're different and um, how we disagree to come together and find out what we have in common. Down at the high school and middle school fields, the annual lumberjack show took place, allowing those of all ages to test out their skills. Uh, 
All right, so another beautiful day at Hopkinton Family Day, and you got the uh, Lumberjack Show taking place once again. Uh, seems like a good turnout today. How's everything going? Good. The weather, of course, is in our favor. A little bit hot, but you know what? Remember back to the 300th anniversary, we had ice pellets in the air. So we'll take this any day. We got them lined up. The axe throwing, of course, is always the most popular because everybody thinks they're going to nail it, and then they get over there in reality. But there's some good people over there. The sawing events, we got a couple little kids events. Try to get something for little kids in lumberjack competition and stuff. So it's good. We've got a good turnout. It's been steady. It's coming down a little at a time. So we're happy with it, yeah. It's a good turnout. At the high school fields, Hopkinton Family Day took place featuring activities for the kids, food trucks, live music, and a whole lot more. Hey, welcome to um, Hopkinton Family Day. This is great, another great turnout, a fabulous weather. We had bad weather all week, and now we've got this great weather. I'm getting ready to uh, go in the dunk tank for a half an hour. That's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun. It's just great it's having the community get together on a day like this. And it's, uh, it's, it's what we always pray for, good weather and uh, good friends and a good community. Oh. Colin and Libby Hurley, give him a little hand. Come on. All right, so another uh, great event uh, this year. Big turnout. Couldn't ask for uh, better weather. Can you just talk about how the day has gone? Uh, very well, very smoothly. Uh, a lot of planning. Actually, it's uh, been a year. This past year, it's been meeting monthly. And not so much me, but so many members of the Friends of Hopkinton have been fabulous. Ann Click, who's been leading the charge, uh, just phenomenal. I can't, I can't say how much she's been great, as well as all the committee members. Um, but it's all led up to this day. It's warm. It's nice. Uh, very pleased with the turnout, but uh, the best is yet to come with some more entertainment and, of course, the finale of the fireworks. So I would say it's going very well. Excellent, and uh, how do you think having all these events on the same day with Poly Arts, the Lumberjack Show, and this have worked out? Uh, at first we thought we were a little, thought that might be a challenge, but uh, you know, it's, it's worked out.